morning you all it is a cold brisk morning here in Arlington Texas on this Thursday morning when I am filming this over the weekend I was picking all of my peppers out of all these containers that I have them growing in and I have a lot of vegetables growing in containers but I turned on the camera because I wanted to give you all a tour of all the containers and all the vegetables that I have growing in them because I think it's very important for those of you who are new to gardening you may have a small space that you can see that you can grow anything in a container so in this video we're gonna do a container tour for those of you who are new welcome and if you are returning I'm so glad to see you again don't forget to subscribe or hit that like and notification buttons because here on this channel we post a lot of urban gardening issues planting decorating you know just urban home life so let's get to this tour Okay y'all, I am out here harvesting peppers this morning and I thought I would turn the camera on and actually talk about container gardening and kind of give you a tour of all the containers that I have currently that are growing food. Um, there's a lot of you who are in small spaces or you don't, you have a small yard and you don't have a lot of space, you can't put in these garden beds, but I want you to know you can still grow food um, on your patio, on your terrace, or even at your small yard. This is a very what is this this is the one two three four five six this is the seven tier green stock i've had this one for two years this is my second year with this one and last year i grew just as much as you see right now it's currently growing um cilantro basil purple basil um, it has bell peppers hot peppers sweet peppers flowers I'm trying to think of everything tomatoes i grew tomatoes in the spring in this in fact there's one right here she's trying to come back I doubt she'll make it well maybe she will I don't know but I wanted to show you this is jalapenos Tabasco peppers Thai chili peppers sweet little bee growing in this and you can see this plant is huge and I'm gonna walk over to the other side and show you where it's coming out at she's obviously very curious about me so you can see that's one plant that right there is just one plant and then we also have bell peppers growing in here. And then let me show you the stock on this plant. Now I know a lot of people will say, oh, you can't grow this type of thing because it requires too much root space, it requires too much water. And the truth is, it requires attendance and patience. That's what that requires. And if you stick with it and you stay with it, you can grow just about anything. People grow carrots in these, they grow beets in these, um, they grow broccoli, cabbages. I mean, it will grow just about anything in it. And then you also have what's called, of course we have our standard pots. This is ginger that's growing right here. Of course, it's not ready to harvest. We're still waiting on it, but hopefully it'll be ready in soon. And these are called grow bags. These are cloth grow bags. This is a 20 gallon cloth grow bag and it's currently growing beets. Can you see that beet? There she is coming up. Now some of these, because I didn't thin them out, that's all that's wrong with this. It has nothing to do with the grow bag. It's my lack of thinning, but that's okay because these are extremely nutrient. We can eat these in salads, we can juice these. Um, you know, you can use them as greens, you can saute them, you can just do about anything. So I'm not really worried about that. Okay, so I'm gonna take you over here to the next couple of things that I have. These are just pots. This is just a clay pot and this is Malabar spinach. Now, y'all, I don't grow Malabar spinach because I wanna eat it. To me, it's one of the most beautiful plants that you can grow. It'll vine everywhere, it comes back every year. It is a perennial. And see these are their little seed pods and they come back every year um, but look at these vines especially in the fall can you all see that burgundy vine especially in the fall it's absolutely stunning and that's why I grow it but this little beauty this is an eggplant and you can see and if you think this pot is small wait till you see the next one but look at the size of those stalks there's two of them in there I don't know if you all can see that and this is her second round of eggplants for me. Now, I know a lot of people don't like eggplants and that's okay. Oh, wait till you see this cabbage over here. I have cleaned these stupid worms off here I don't know how many times. Anyway, 
sorry for the distraction this is her second round of eggplants for me and then I have two more eggplants um, that I'm going to show you here in just a minute but if you're someone who likes eggplants these are the smaller uh, I think these are called purple beauties so they're like about I'll show you how big they are here in just a minute but they're about a handful size so if you're in a small space it's perfect size there's one even smaller so here is my poor pitiful cabbage so let's see you can see now I have cleaned these worms off I don't know how many times and we kill them each time and I tell you what kids when you do organic this is what you got to do now I didn't come out here yesterday so he was able to eat away and you can see he's the only one that was left okay so this is a purple cabbage it'll be just fine it'll bounce back it's just part of organic gardening y'all and this is called tansy and now tansy is good it's a it's a municipal herb of course you can use the greens um, you want to stick probably more to the flowers but it does take you all summer almost all summer before they actually bloom and once they bloom you're gonna cut it back and you use it again but tansy is good for those of you us women not you us women who are going through hard menstrual cramps you can dry those flowers out you can grind them up and put them in a pill form and take them and that will help with that type of stuff so we're gonna move over here my sweet little angel Bootsy who adopted us he's a feral kitty this is an artichoke I want to show you the resilience of an artichoke um, a lot of people say in Texas you can't grow these now I'm gonna be honest with you it's better to grow them in the fall than it is throughout the summer because the heat is just a little too much even though it's a tropical plant our heat is just a little too much for it but if you can nurse it through the summer this is what happens in the fall and we should get a bulb here pretty soon she's getting pretty big it wouldn't surprise me within the next few weeks we don't see one but I move this pot and you can see it's split and of course as I water the water removes the dirt and I keep putting dirt in there and of course it keeps washing out that's what all this potting soil but she is well enough alive and she's doing just fine so we're gonna nurse her through this and uh, hopefully get some artichokes out of her all right so here we are this is a couple more container this is a little, I think these are called Tiny Tims. Very prolific in giving you tomatoes. For those of you who are in small spaces, of course the tomatoes aren't big. And then these back here are both broccoli. And now, they are a little crowded, um, but I'm not really gonna worry about that. Um, they'll still produce a nice head of broccoli for me and it should all be okay. This is my new lavender, look how pretty. All right, let me show you these um, eggplants. We gotta get these harvested. Okay, these are the purple beauties. This is about how big they get. Now this one I'm gonna go ahead and pull because you can see she's starting to turn, but this is about how big they get. And she's in a little bit of bigger pot there are two plants in there and this was her first production to give us fruit but you can see she's already working on the second round but this is the one i want to show you you see how tiny that pot is and this is a teardrop eggplant and there they are So this is her first round of giving us food and we'll get those from her as soon as they're ready but we're going to harvest these eggplants then i'm going to take you over and show you the rest okay here's our eggplant harvest that we just got off of those two plants in that container again container gardening is fairly simple it's about persistence paying attention and patience let's go over to the big garden sorry about that i accidentally shut the camera off okay so this is where most of the pots are growing at so let me show you what we have as you can see we have a pot of basil now this pot has also grown a tomato it grew cucumbers and now it's growing these and it's just a regular old old plastic pot that i re repainted and then here's another grow bag this has got the only two kohlrabis that made it so we're hoping to see those but i want to show you these grow bags these grow bags are smaller now these are 10 gallon grow bags 
and they are growing bell peppers. We had a little worm attack not too long ago, but they're doing okay. They're bouncing back. So we have one here. This is another bell pepper. You can see it's growing. These are all California Wonder bell peppers. We have another one right here that's growing bell peppers. And then we have one that's growing cherry peppers right here. And we gotta get these that are turning red. Because once these guys go red, if you grow these, get them off the vine because uh, they're sweet. And your squirrels, once they've had one, will love them. Let's see if I can do this. Well, I tried. <laughs> There it is. I think we got one on the back side here. So here we have peas growing in, um, again, it's just a regular pot. I put a tomato cage in it and that'll give it something to climb. Now I originally planted the whole ring and then two in the center, but these are the only ones that popped up even though they were soaked for 24 hours. That's just kind of what happens in the way of gardening. So, just another way you can grow. You do not have to have grow bags. You can even use just about anything. Um, buckets. Um, you can go to Dollar Tree and get you some of those those cute little small, what are they, five gallon, 10 gallon trash cans. Poke some holes in the bottom of it, cost you $1.25, fill it with dirt, and grow you some food. We don't need to make it complicated. So here we go, we got some here, and we got some right there. We got a couple over there and these are just 10 gallon grow bags that they're growing in and you can see how big the plant is now with grow bags and with pots when you're growing food in them my recommendation is to understand that even though you put good soil in there to begin with and you set it up perfectly as you water 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 especially in the summertime you are literally watering the nutrients out of the bag so you need to add um, probably about just before your hottest months start, from that point on, about a quarter cup of a good slow release organic fertilizer. And that way that'll keep your plants healthy. You're gonna do that once a month. I know it sounds crazy, but if you are in a hot place where you have to water a lot, you, like I said, are literally washing your nutrients out of your soil every time you water. There's not a lot of soil in there, so it doesn't hold that stuff. So that's my recommendation for growing things, whether it be in the green stalks or in these grow bags. My green stalks, I take fish emulsion, I take about a cup of, I know it's a lot, a cup of fish emulsion, I put it in the top reservoir, and then I fill up that reservoir, let it run through, and then I fill it up a second time, and let that run through. That assures that all the fertilizer goes all the way to the bottom. So let me get these harvested, and then I will come back. Okay, there's a little harvest from that plant. So I wanna show you these. Again, a 10 gallon grow bag. These are hatch chilies. This is my second year to grow hatch chilies in grow bags, and I'm telling you, some of these bags have two plants in them, and they grow phenomenally in, in grow bags. It's almost as if they were created for grow bags. It, it's that, it's that great. But um, I grow them every year, and I've got one. Let's see, got three, four, five, six. I have seven. Can y'all hear that songbird? It's a beautiful morning out here. Okay, I have seven grow bags of these hatch chilies, and let me show you what they look like. Now, I don't have to use tweezers to get these guys off. See, they're pretty big. You just, just pull them. Yay, I finally can harvest something without shutting off the camera. <laughs> I think that's all that's on this plant. All right, let's move on to the next ones. So here's a large lavender that's been growing all summer long doing just beautifully tomatoes are starting to come in over here so we're gonna go back here we have more hatch chilies back here now I want to show you something that's very important we just talked about draining the nutrients out of your soil so I want to show you you see how these are smaller and they have these brown browning that's an indication to me that these need calcium um, it just means that I haven't given it enough food so we're gonna give it some take some milk and um, just pour a little bit right you know take some whole milk put it in a cup you can water it down if you want to you don't have to um, we're gonna pour it right in there and give it a shot of calcium you can also do that with dried milk so you can see they don't look so good on this plant okay we have some smaller ones on here we're not gonna harvest these we're gonna leave them alone 
but we have some smaller ones on these. Okay, here's one that I've missed for a couple of days. We're just gonna let the soil have that. And that's some small ones down there. Okay, sorry about that y'all. I had to um, put my damn camera down real quickly. I had someone walk up on me and it used to feel safe in this neighborhood, but I don't anymore. But anyways, I didn't, I hid my camera really quickly. So this is another hatch chili that I have. It doesn't have any, it's got a bunch of babies. And this is about its fifth round and you can see all the other little ones it's got coming up on it, but you can see it has two plants in it. There's one right here and one right there. It has two plants in it and they grow beautifully in these grow bags. So I got a whole bunch of shishito peppers off of this while this person was talking to me. So we're gonna move over to the other side because we have all that to talk about over there. And just as I was walking out, check out this big guy. Look at the size of this one. Look at that. And these ones are coming in. If you've never grown hatch chilies, I recommend growing them. They uh, do fairly well. So let's come over here. We're gonna talk about three different growing systems that are going on right here. There are some of you who don't have a lot of money and that is absolutely fine. Dollar Tree is your best friend. They have pots, they have, less last year they had these, um, I wouldn't call them plastic. They were a recycled bag that you could easily use as a grow bag and they're easily 20 gallons. Um, but you use them to go around and like when you're in the garden, look at this beauty. Can you all see this? This is a monarch butterfly. She's just one of the many butterflies that we have here at the house but anyways i'm um, sorry for that distraction that was a beautiful distraction though what was i saying dollar tree you can get for a dollar four packages of seeds they have these little grow towers now they are a dollar 25 i will say this about this year's grow towers to me this year the plastic was much thinner and much cheaper than what it has been in previous years so these in my opinion didn't hold up as good but that might have had something to do with the, how hot it was too. We had a lot of extreme heat and these guys were hit by the direct heat over and over and over. And then when I go in the back, I'll show you some more that I got at the same time and they look completely different. They were more in the shades than they were, you know, in the sun. So I want to show you this. This is a Dollar Tree stack. I got 40 of these for $40. I ordered them offline and I stacked them up. I've got two stacks here and several in the back. But I want to show you the size of these containers. They're very small, but the dirt goes to the middle. So when you grow something that has a large stock, it doesn't just hold in here. The grow system gives it the space where the, the roots can grow, you know, towards the center. And so this is a large pepper that's growing here. This is a tomato. This tomato grew over the summer. Again, it was another one now. I don't pull my roots out of the soil. Um, sorry, hair in my mouth. When we're actively growing something, because when you leave the roots in there, it continues to break down and it feeds the soil. So it's a natural fertilizer for your plants that are still in there. But she's trying to bounce back. She's got a couple of little flowers here. I doubt she'll make it, but hey, you know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but in this container right here, not only do I have tomatoes, I have these little black beauty hot peppers in here. And this right here, and it goes all the way back there. Here's another big one on there, is a bell pepper plant. Yes, a bell pepper plant. It's growing bell peppers. I also have this one over here, and this one too is growing tomatoes, basil, and peppers. And you can see all the peppers on that side, and they grow just fine. And then down the middle, right here, is another green stalk. Now she's looking a little putrid right now because we're going to have to clean her out soon. But over the summer, here's one of her big tomatoes. It goes way over there and over that way and it's just kind of sprawling everywhere right now um, she has grown herbs flowers tomatoes you can see these are called cardinal basil and they are about to shoot we're waiting we're waiting miss cardinal um, these beautiful burgundy plumes off the tops of them but again this is the five tier 
and these ones are even smaller than the green one you just saw and they grow you can see the size of these stalks let's see if i can dig out this tomato on the bottom and show you the stalk of this tomato without being stung by anything there it is oh bees are coming at me you see that stalk right there that's the stalk of the tomato so you can grow food for your family now are you going to have crazy harvests and sustainable harvests for the summer yes if you stay with it and continue to encourage your plants to grow switch out the plants when you need to yes you can grow enough food to put back and preserve to sustain your family okay you're not gonna be able to see the bag but i'm gonna try this is a 20 gallon grow bag these are sweet potatoes we're almost there we're just kind of starting to turn yellow we're gonna wait just a little bit longer come around to this side here so you can see the back side of this you can see we got some peppers and then the sweet potatoes now we got two bags we got one right here and then there's one just right over there so we got a couple more peppers to harvest and then i'll take you on the rest of the tour in the back with the rest of the plants back there okay we made it to the backyard here is another one of the towers that we had strawberries in um, i just wanted to show you the difference and these didn't sit in the sun they were protected from the sun and as you can see they're perfectly fine so i i really believe that the sun up front played a huge factor in drying that plastic out so that's something to consider these are trees this is a lime tree this is a Meyer lemon tree and then two fig trees that are rescued out of the trash can at home depot quite proud of that one but i just wanted to show you these these are 10 gallon tree containers now i got this at our local nursery um I want to say I paid five dollars each for them well with the exception of that little blue one over there that's a completely different one but I want to say I got I paid five dollars each for them from our local nursery if this is just from when they get their trees in and they up pot them or make their displays and they have these big containers left over and they sell them so that's a little tip if you're looking for containers check out marketplace look for landscapers um, who are selling their used landscaping or nursery pots and I'm telling you you get great deals that's where I get all these big ones I'm going to show them to you here in just a minute I want to show you this is the five tier I believe they call this the leaf five tier leaf system um, I'll have to look it up I'll put it down in the description so a link to it so you can find it as well as um, the grow bags that you have seen and um, the other green stocks up front this is another one this is where all my plant herbs grow but it's about you can see it still has herbs in it but we're getting ready to put a lot of lettuce in it and I'll show you that here in just a second lettuce and spinach is what it's going to grow into some of these we're going to cut back and we'll dry them out but one of the things that's happening i don't know if you can see how shiny that is these trees are sapping like crazy i've never seen anything like it it's just craziness craziness okay let me show you these large trees okay these are 30 gallon containers that i got off marketplace from a landscaper who sold me eight of them for thirty dollars i think is what i paid for them so another way to get um you know to get a container this big these trees are nectarine trees for those of you who are new here these are nectarine trees that i got at home depot they cost me forty dollars each and you could easily as long as you have a sunny enough patio the with nectarines you don't have to have two of them these are self pollinating so if you're looking for fruit trees make sure you're finding ones that are self pollinating these are my chickens they're naughty aren't you yeah especially you i also have i also have two plum trees now if you're going to have plum trees of course you have to have a second one for pollination and i also have elderberries that are growing here in these pots and then i have a grapevine that's growing now this was its first year and i honestly thought it was dead when it came in i didn't think i was going to get anything from it i'm shocked that it started to grow late in the summer and you can see it's going down the fence but i also have a lovely little squirrel for those of you who are new here i have a squirrel who likes to eat my flowers 
and she has dug up all of the flowers except for one I don't know what's wrong with that one but she don't like it and that's what all that dirt is but you can see I'm growing this is called a razzmatazz grape I hope you enjoyed the tour as many of you know who are not new who've been here with me for a while since the beginning of the season um, I took part in that container challenge with Becky over at Acre Homestead and that challenge was patio to plate so this is kind of the end of that season and then soon here we'll be planting garlic in a lot of these containers because we have some exciting news coming in the future so again if you are new here thank you for coming to this channel and taking the time to watch this entire video if you are new don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button because new videos are posted often now that we're getting into the fall and winter season a lot more gardening videos are going to be posted and more decorating videos are coming until i see you in the next video you all take care of yourselves you keep your heads up and no matter what no matter how you do it you keep growing bye bye y'all